I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Roaring through the mist, USS Gearing's on the prowl. The legendary upgrade, her foes throw in the towel. With better stealth, her guns never rest. In the dance of battle, she's simply the best. USS Gearing cuts through silence with her torpedoes ready through the sea they drift. Enemies in sight, panic they feel. She's on their Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the gearing, and I finally got the legendary mod, and then I wanted to try it out to you know, kind of give a, my thoughts and opinions about it, as well as uh, seeing what your guys' thoughts. There's going to be multiple videos showing different aspects of it, so uh, before we begin, if you see uh, value in the channel and like, like what we're doing here, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. At 4,000 subs, we're going to do another premium giveaway, and thank you guys for making this a better place and making this a fun place to learn and just build a good community. So right off the bat what is the legendary mod for gearing uh, i'll put up a snapshot of it if you don't know what it is it basically the biggest thing it decreases your detection right there see we spot the daring first that's crit incredible so our our concealment is now down to 5.6 which is kind of on the line of what shimikaze is like so you're kind of online with the, the japanese destroyers uh concealment so very very good in that aspect now the downside is you increase your reload on the guns by 15 percent and then you also increase your reload on your torpedoes by five percent and the cool thing is you also have an additional little kind of buff if you want to call it is five percent dispersion for enemy ships shooting at you so their dispersion gets worse by five percent so every time they're shooting on you notice they're all majority of the time missing so um that's a pretty good more stealth tactic kind of role for the gearing so let's see what my thoughts on it, as well as we're going to do a little uh, uh, observation of Destroyer gameplay on how to get better as a Destroyer player. And I hope you guys just um, take, you know, of course, as a grain of salt. I'm not the best player out there. I'm just I really enjoy the Destroyer gameplay. And I'm just giving you my thoughts on techniques and procedures, especially if you're new to the game, uh, that you want to see what kind of uh, TTPs or techniques, ta tactics, techniques and procedures uh, to kind of figure out what's the best suited for you to play Destroyer gameplay, which I be believe is the, the strongest ship in the game is the Destroyer because they do everything. And, and that's why I think learning about this to getting more players to become a Destroyer player really helps the game out and really... Um, you're leading from the front. So again, we're going to observe the gameplay and tactics with the new legendary upgrade as well as just basic gameplay overall for uh, Destroyer. So what's the first thing here in the gearing? I'm going out there trying to eliminate their Destroyer player because if you eliminate Destroyer, you increase the probability of winning for your team. Notice I have RPF right here using Aslane's mod, Aslane's mod right there. And uh, just to give that little kind of uh, extra feature, a uh, little pointy aspect, so it gives a more clear uh, view of where the enemy is. So I always like to keep the RPF in front of me at my one o'clock or two o'clock or um, 11 o'clock. So one to 11 o'clock, keep those in front and keep the guns facing that direction. So I know where the daring is at right now. I have situational awareness, so I can now make a justified, educated decision. I'm gonna go ahead and push in the cap. That's another role as a destroyer player to actually get in, um, the objective or actually solve the problem for my team. I'm out there spotting, torping, uh, capping, and killing enemy destroyers and and torpedoing as well. So that's the basic role of the gearing. I like it a lot. It's overall, the gearing is a fantastic ship. Uh, I've already done a video a review about it. Just let me know what your thoughts are. But basically, it's very good for competitive, very good for randoms, very good for almost every situation you want to think about. The only downside I don't like about the gearing is there's no heals especially in the world of warships today where they're upgrading ships like crazy and they're overpowering uh, destroyers nowadays. Uh, they're giving destroyers, I mean, goodness, the Elbing has over 30,000 HP. You know, Ragnar has up to 30,000 if you build for it. So 30,000 to get against my 22,900 is, n I just seems like it's over it's been power crept and not really fair these days but whatever it makes up for its agility agility its stealthiness and the torpedoes and uh i would say really the maneuverability of it now with the dispersion it's really hard to shoot the gearing sometimes i feel like because with the maneuverability as well it used to sit low in the water like the yu yang uh, the same kind of hull and everything, but now I think the gearing has been kind of, uh, I don't know, changed, if you will. But I, I haven't been playing this long enough to know, but you guys let me know. Has gearing been raised out of the water or lowered in the water? I don't know. I don't know if this is the same kind of design as when it was first released. Uh, I feel like it is difficult to hit, especially with this new legendary upgrade where you get 5% dispersion on enemy shells. 
So that's good in that aspect. So you can see right here, just uh, I got to eliminate the Seattle. It's a radar just cruiser. I don't like radar cruisers. I want to eliminate them as fast as I can. So that's one of my priorities down the list. So I've analyzed the situation. I've already capped. I've spotted. So let's get rid of that uh, the Seattle. Okay, great job. See, I spotted the Seattle. Get baited him firing at me, which reveals his position to other players or just gets him distracted where he just loses right there. The guns and the gearing are really good. I do enjoy them way better than Shimakaze. Uh, I have to compare this to Shimakaze now because why? We have 5.6 concealment. So if I was to choose Shimakaze or gearing, I would choose the gearing and over Shimakaze any day because the guns are al allowing me to fend off any kind of distraction or threat that I may face. And of course, if I wanted to go one-on-one -on -one against a Shimakaze, I think I would choose gearing any day. Now, daring on the other hand, if I had to go one on one, I would choose daring because daring has way better guns, uh, way uh, you know, quick tactical smokes. It's maneuverable. It's fast. It's agile. I would pick daring over gearing. Now, for basic gameplay, um, that's why I can't compare daring and gearing because I think daring is just really, really powerful, right? Now, the gearing, although, ooh, nice. Look at that. We kill gearing with fire. See, so. I just got lucky. I had friend, uh, help and friendship over here. So the gearing wise, let me speed this up while we're moving and maneuvering. Okay, my next goal is to go and spot for our team and go torp the enemy battleships and cruisers and try to win this game. Okay, now what are the good sides of the gearing? Like I've showed with this tactical upgrade here, legendary upgrade, my concealment is now 5.6. Look at my mini mapper there, 5.6 kilometers, which means I literally almost outspot everything. Short of the new ship like the Jaeger or really, really tactical ships that are really concealment and submarines, um, the gearing is probably one of the best concealments with this uh, legendary upgrade. And why is that important? Well, the only thing I can think of really for me as a, this this kind of tactical role is for stealth torpedoing that you can get a little bit closer, giving yourself a little bit more buffer space right now because the Shimakaze is in front of me. He's on my team. He's got a great concealment. I mean, concealment for him. Let me hit the tab button. Look at the concealment on the Shimakaze, 5.6 as well. So he gets to go to 5.6. Well, then that's a that, that's not right. That's not correct, right there. It's actually 5.6 with a legendary upgrade. Okay, it doesn't know, but we both have the same concealment now, 5.6, right? So that's great. And that means we can outspot almost everything, uh, minus like I talked about, cause submarines and a couple other destroyers. But really, Shimakaze and Gearing have a great, great concealment to go and do these little stealth torpedo tactics now. The downside is that you get an increased reload on the torpedoes, and you're going to see my build. I don't really build for torpedoes. I, I like having that gun power because when I noticed the gun power was increased to 3.3 seconds or 3 seconds, a little bit longer, I didn't feel comfortable because when I did encounter a destroyer, I wanted to have that extra reload gun power, and I'm sailing around the ship. Like right now, I'm not really doing anything. I'm fat, dumb, and happy. I'm really just being that lull nothing and the, i'm not really too worried about having a torpedo reload of extra seven seconds or 10 seconds or whatever i mean might, might be, ever, whatever that might be and the adrenaline rush is kicking in anyways so i do have a decent reload on the torpedo so i'm not too worried about torpedo reload especially with everything like the hindenburg in front of me here has hydro so they can spot the torpedoes far away so i don't really care about the reload of torpedoes i do like the, the aspect of the guns because they're a little bit more consistent I'm going to encounter the scores a little bit more because I'm trying to go in there uh, pretty quickly and, and stealthily. And again, I may encounter something that I need to have the guns for, especially the guns when I'm shooting in smoke. Gearing being renowned for having that long-lasting American smoke, which is very, very strong and powerful. You can sit in there and farm. Of course, you got to be careful of other torpedoes and radar as well. So again, you see what we're doing as a destroyer gameplay role. We're going out there, running around capping, and that's kind of what the Shimikaze and I are doing. Now, that's why I like the torpedo, uh, I'm sorry, the gun reload a little bit better than torpedo reload because I can wait an additional 10 seconds. It's not going to kill me, right? So here's the demonstration of the guns. I like this 2.7 reload. I think it's a little comfortable for me. That's why I would rather have the gun reload in slot 6. So I increase, I build for a little bit of reload because of that legendary upgrade does take a, the reload away from me. And I still, I have to wait a little bit longer for t torpedoes and um, guns. So I don't like that aspect. So I like this kind of build a little bit better. Now, do I, do I enjoy the extra concealment? I actually kind of do rather than having better reload because why um, I've noticed that. Oh, nice torpedo hit right here. And boom, there it is. Yep. Torpedo gun reload. Okay, now let's attack this little cloud. Okay, okay, let's go into uh, uh, an academic situation here. Okay, what's in front of me? I have a Fletcher. Oh, see, this is the problem. I'm getting your radar, right? I have a problem in front of me around, which is the Fletcher. So what can I do? I don't have hydro. I know he doesn't have hydro. I'm going to just bum rush this guy because I know I can go one-on-one -on -one against a Fletcher. I just feel like tier 10 versus tier 9, I can win this. I got enough health. And, oh, so he's got help from the GK. The GK is now spotting me with Hydro. I got to rush this guy because eventually I will get close enough that he gets spotted. There it is. Right there. Automatic spot within a certain distance. I'm going to aim for his guns so if I can knock as many as I can out. My guns are a little bit more superior than the Fletcher, although he has good reload. 
I'm just gonna have to outplay him at this point. So let's see. We're gonna aim in. Boom, he goes down. That's three kills right there, 51,000. Now we got the torpedoes this close in. Oh man, the GK is gonna just take a beating. He's got the Hydra up. He can see those things coming. But look at that dispersion right there. He shot and missed me. So that 5% does play off a little bit or just poor aiming on his part. So we're gonna see if we can kill this guy as well. Nova Brisk, he's only down to 16. See, this is why I want the gun reload because I do need to shoot and kill this guy as fast as I can with the amount of health I have. And we kill this GK, and boom, another one goes down. Three, uh, four kills right now. Let's see if we can get a crack in here. Hopefully, we can save the day. He is firing super accurate shells, never brisk. E oh, ouch, yeah, there's no way. I mean, yeah, you can only do so much as a player. K taking out four of the guys right there in there, but that's the demonstration of the firepower of the gearing. We could definitely lose this match anyways, but you saw right there what that... Um, just the ability of the gearing again in that uh, tactical role mode and needing that uh, extra gun power versus having torpedo reload. That's my thought on it. Let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, of course, we'll let's um, we'll speed through this and take a look at the stats at the end. Yeah, we lose that right there. Let's take a look at the stats. Uh, 75,000 dash, not bad. Four kills. Man, that's powerful. Defended and captured, insisted capture spotting. Yeah, we're doing everything a destroyer player should do. Uh, top of the team, of course, right there doing the majority of the bulk of the work. And you can see the stats right there. Uh, a lot, a lot of damage, a lot of firepower doing a, in our job. We're doing everything for our job right there. So let's take a look at the next video of how Legendary Upgrade works for me. All right, this is the gearing on Warriors Pass. So let's take a look at another video of how Legendary Upgrade on gearing is. And again, the biggest, like I said, the biggest, I would say, pro about it is, of course, the consumer, which means that you get to uh, see first, spot first, shoot first on an enemy, uh, tech, most likely an enemy destroyer. And that's that first look, first kill kind of mentality. Now, I'm not normally going out there looking for trouble, okay, in a gearing, because why? I don't have any heals. Like I just talked about earlier, like you are literally power crept against a lot of these bigger, badder uh, destroyers nowadays that have so much health and firepower that you really can't duke it out too long in a gearing. And I've noticed when I go up against gearings, I'm not afraid, okay? You know, when you see a gearing, you're like, well, whatever, I can take this guy out and other destroyers, right? Especially bigger, badder, uh, more gunboat focused destroyers. And that's why I don't know if legendary and, and sacrificing gun reload and torpedo reload is worth the concealment because now you're you're taking that risk now here's a there, there you go you saw that right there i get to spot yamagiri first now yamagiri's um concealment is that along the lines of the shimikaze um really just kind of that really tactical torpedo roll and right there he smokes up right off the bat and he has nobody spotting for him as well yamagiri is 5.6 as well so look we both have the same um, spotting ability. Now, was that really, that engagement right there, was that worth it to you? You let me know if you thought that was worth it because for me, um, I, I didn't know what to do in that situation to make a, a, to kill that destroyer and get a secure outcome. All it led to was he got spotted first. I get the first shots. I did about 4,300 damage at the top of the screen there. You can see, was that engagement really worth it? Okay. I now did I sacrifice anything? Eh, maybe about a uh, thousand HP almost. Yeah. So I took some damage. I got spotted. Now, if he had a radar support, I'd have been probably, you know, reduced uh, or I would have lost a lot of my health and sacrificed a lot for what gain. Uh, I need to, as a destroyer that needs to survive, again, you need to survive the long haul of the battle. That's my all biggest, biggest lesson for a lot of you new destroyer players out there. You veterans already know that, hey, the destroyer is the key component of the game and you need to survive the onslaught of the battle and be the one that has to literally be there at the 10-minute mark to go around and cap and spot and look for all the... Uh, and mop up everything else at the very end, right? Sounds less intuitive because why? You think that the battleship's supposed to survive the longest, but in the age of World of Warships, look what's happening. Look, Montana, Palmer, running to the back of the map. Of course, you got carriers to spot everybody, and you guess you got your push is over here on the right, obviously, looking at the mini-map. So the idea of the battleship has to survive long is impossible nowadays in Wilds because you just get melted down. As you can see on my western flank, they're running away because they're afraid they're going to die. So I thought that's the point of World of Warships, right? But again, I think that okay, here we go. We're engaging Yamagiri. He has nobody spotting for him. He's getting, getting radar right now. So here's a great tactical situation right here where I outgun. It seems like I outgun the Yamagiri. I don't know. I got him in a, a, a good bind here. Now, his guns are pretty strong, too. Uh, if Yamagiri has a good reload and everything, he can actually melt you down. He's got that burst fire right there. So now it was his mistake. Now he burst fired. So he won't be able to shoot for a while. And I'm just going to use this opportunity to get him. And boom, he goes down. Splash one. So that was that little engagement right there. What did I sacrifice? Half of my health, majority of my health. And now I have to survive. Now everybody's firing at me. You see all that dispersion right there? It's good for that legendary upgrade. Oh my gosh, look at all these torpedoes. That's why I hate Shima and Yamagiri players. I mean, just all that's their that's their one gimmick. It's like, let me just shotgun blast a bunch of torpedoes and hope for the best. And they're dead already. I don't like that tactic, okay? Alright, so gearing very maneuverable. Oh, what is this? Oh 
Yeah, all right. I took some hits right there. Uh, that was probably from the carrier. Yeah, I hate carriers, by the way. All right, let's take a look at that. All right, so now my smoke, the American smoke lasts a long time. That was standard for gearing. Now let's talk about tactical uh, gameplay for the gearing itself, a legendary upgrade. It is good in the sense that you spot the enemy first, but you take a hit for, uh, now adrenaline rush has kicked in. I have a 2.2 second reload. Now if I had, I don't have the legendary upgrade, my reload's back probably down to 2.3-ish. Is it worth it? In my personal opinion, I think I would do better just having the 5.9 consume, which is good. It's not bad. You know, going down to 5.6, that means you're going into that more stealth, tactical, torpedo gun, uh, torpedo kind of role of Shimakaze. You're playing the gearing like a Shimakaze. Is it bad? I don't know. I mean, do I need that 0.3, per, uh, 0.3 uh, kilometer of concealment for a gearing? In my personal opinion, uh, I don't know. I don't think I do because I'm not going around. Oh, I'm not going around that close to anybody that requires that concealment. I mean, I'm doing just fine with 5.9. Now that I sit back and, and think about it and look at it, 5.9 is not bad. It, it's okay. 5.6. What, what do I get out with an extra 5.6? Do I get a little closer to a battleship or a cruiser, or is that more of trying to detect enemy destroyers first? Well, how many times am I actually going head to head against a destroyer player that requires this? I don't know. I, I don't think it happens that often because I'm again. What did I tell you? I'm, I'm not a a uh, hunter killer destroyer like a small one or a, what's another hunter killer destroyer? Uh, maybe like a Marceau or uh, let's see. What is another? Daring is a good uh, destroyer hunter killer druid. I mean, yeah. I don't. I'm not going around with my head cut off looking for trouble. You know, in a gearing, it seems like I'm more of that standoff role. Guns there if I need it to fend off things, but majority of times I'm torping as much as I can. So sacrificing torpedo reload for concealment, yeah, you're more a stealthy torpedo boat, but are you really needing that concealment? In my personal opinion, now in today's world of worships, I don't think you do because you're not running around literally trying to hunt down a destroyer. Uh, look, the, the Z-44, he's spotted. In today's world of warships, I'm not too worried about trying to hunt down and, and out-detect a, a, a destroyer player. I'm already out-detecting majority things at 5.9 anyways. The only thing that you see at 5.6 is for submarines and maybe a Shimakaze player here and there. Outside of that, I don't personally think I would do better having the extra torpedo reload because then I pump out more torpedoes. Because then sometimes I just shotgun blast a bunch of torpedoes out there all the time. And of course, I like that gun reload when I have extra health. So right now, the reason why I have 2.2 second reload, as you can see at the bottom of the screen here for my guns, I have 2.6 second reload because I've look, I've taken a lot of damage and that adrenal rush is kicking in. I could have a lower reload at more health and to have keep more health if I didn't take the legendary upgrade. So again, there's a balance there about what kind of role you want to play as a gearing player. I'm shot. The, 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 I like the torpedoes. I shot those torpedoes out to range. They're going out to 16.5. They already drive out to that far, so it's not bad at all. So let's speed it up here. What am I going to do? Am I going to hit anything? Okay, so right here, I, I got an extra about 15, 18 seconds of uh, torpedo reload. Now, is that bad to you? Maybe you, I could have shot right here, but are you okay to wait an extra 15 seconds for the torpedo reload? That is up to you to decide for that extra concealment. I'm noticing my concealment is not really a factor right now, having 5.6 over 5.9. It really wouldn't have made a difference right here, okay? So me personally, in today's world of warships, I think having that extra concealment of 0.3 for a gearing isn't really worth it for me and my way I play it. Now for you, if you want to play that really stealthy, stealthy gunboat like a Shimakaze, if you want to be that Shimakaze player in a gearing, but sacrifice the gun reload and torpedo reload and have a little bit longer wait times, that's fine. That good, I guess that's good for you. If that works for you, good on you for me i like to have the better reloads on everything torpedo and whatever and i still have a 5.9 concealment and that's still okay to me uh for me my personal way of uh rolling around in this thing and of course the five percent on the dispersion yeah i'm not going to get detected that often in the gearing anyways and i have smoke to cover my butt so having an extra five percent of dispersion on enemy fire yeah it, that's not too too important i get a torpedo hit right there way out in the distance probably hitting that grows avoid do i hit him again yeah, take your, keep, keep your eyes over on the left. There, I get, ooh, do I get another one? Yeah, he took another one. Wow, that was good. Just lucky torpedoes. Are the, the gearing torpedoes, for some reason, are just so difficult sometimes to dodge it or detect or avoid unless you have hydro. It seems like, oh, I'm getting another one. 
Holy crap, look at that. I get another hit on the GK. So you do a lot of damage um, on the uh, the gearing with these torpedoes because they're so difficult to detect. They come out of nowhere in the long range, right? Do a lot of good damage. Oh, I'm flooding as well. I get a good flooding on the top right there. So right now I've got RPF. Okay, let's academic situation. I'll tell you, RPF is showing that the destroyer Z44 is somewhere in here. I've already analyzed the situation. I do not believe he has hydro. Nope, he doesn't have hydro, so I can attack this smoke at free will. I just got to be careful. And I got RPF to get my guns pointed in the right direction. First look, first kill, right? So as soon as he comes out of his smoke, I'm going to detect right there. See, concealment would have mattered at this point because we're so close anyways. Let's take a look at how we do. I'm going to aim and get a lot of 2,600 damage. A lot of firepower on the gearing right now. And don't know why he's not firing, probably launching torpedoes. So we're going to turn away right now. Tactical destroyer here. Turn away to get yourself away from the torpedoes, getting yourself maneuverability, and boom, we got him, and he gets the last shot on us as well. Again, we could have won that had we had more health or heal. That's why I don't do the gearing tactical roll, hunter, killer, destroyer roll. It's just too difficult to survive right there. Let's take a look at this. We actually do win this game. So we did our job as a destroyer player, and yep, there we go. That's a win. So that's a win in my book, and a carrier goes down. I hate carriers. Kill them all. Yeah, boom, he goes down. Let's take a look at the end results of the gearing. So... What would it? Now you've already seen a video of me doing gearing a uh, gameplay uh, without the legendary upgrade. You saw it's, it's just as effective and powerful. Did the concealment right here affect this battle at all? I don't really think it did because, again, I was not spotted the majority of the time. I was out there in the distance, torpedoing from distance. And when I did engage a destroyer player, it was already close enough that I, I needed it. The very beginning you saw where me engaging the Yamagiri player. Uh, right off the bat, that was the one time where we our concealments matched, and we just saw each other right away. We fired away, but he smoked up immediately. So right there, that engagement was the only time I thought concealment played a difference in a role in this game. Now, what would I do to counter that? As a destroyer player, I would just keep driving in to that Yamagiri player until he got detected, which was a 0.3 drive, right? 0.3 kilometer drive into that uh, Yamagiri player would have revealed him, and then he would have smoked up anyway. So you let me know what your thoughts, what would you uh, see as good or bad versus that 0.3 kilometer uh, uh, gain as opposed to taking a hit and reload uh, for torpedoes and guns. So let's take another look at a video. Okay, final video with the legendary upgrade and the gearing. So uh, for me, again, uh, let's talk about it again. Why, why don't I think that the 0.3 for me and my gameplay uh, style is really uh, going to make much of an impact, really, because, again, I'm not going out and hunter, being a hunter killer in, in this thing anyways. Now, if my gun reload didn't take a hit and my torpedo reload didn't take a hit, see, look, I'm at three seconds right now uh, for minus, uh, was it, 15% on, or plus 15% a gun reload. So in order to make up for that, I would have had to take in the slot six to keep it down. If I didn't and worried about uh, torpedo reload, this gun reload is a little bit higher, like 3.3 seconds. So, again... The biggest thing is you're taking hits on the reloads of the guns and torpedoes. Is it worth it to have that 0.3 detection? And, and like I said, I've analyzed a lot of my play style and video. I'm not going out there, like I said, going to hunt down uh, destroyers to have that concealment really play into a role or factor. You know, And nowadays, is really that 0.3 going to make a difference in the battle of the match? Um, for me, it doesn't. So again, I, like I said, I, I think it's not really worth the upgrade these days. It, it just doesn't for my gameplay style, the way you've seen me play. You guys have seen me play in the, in the videos, and you can you probably logged a lot of it. If you've been a follower of the channel, you've seen how I play the gearing and how I play my destroyer play. It doesn't really really necessarily uh, require that extra concealment for me to play my style, especially in the meta of World of Warships today. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, academic situation. We have a, um, I knew I outspotted majority of things with the Jaeger in front of me. I could go take Alpha. Look, we're doing it. Oh, man, look at this. A team that pushes. My gosh, everybody, take a lesson in the book right here. A team that's actually moving together as one cohesive unit and working together. Destroyers are out front. Submarines, of course, I don't know what you're doing in the back, whatever. You should be out front, too. Napoli's great job pushing on the flank. Right there. Take the flank. Take the fight to the enemy. I love it. This is Take a snapshot of this. Now, the problem is this. We sacrificed too much on Delta side. Now, that Team, that side over there just was dying over there. They lost their uh, destroyer. They lost our um, our cruiser Moscow because everybody was focused firing on him. Yeah, I don't know why us, our battleships running away. You should have supported uh, your team right there, and that, that probably wouldn't have happened. You just your goal is to keep an enemy from overwhelming. You just like we're doing on Alpha flank. We're overwhelming the team right here by sheer amount of force. That's just the way the nature of World Warships is today, okay? Now, I do like the fact that we did push together as a team, and now we're going to go and take Bravo. Now, what is the gearing? Now, a lot of this is just sailing around. I'm just going to speed it up so it's not to bore you. But, yeah, the torpedoes are already great. They go out to distance 16.5. Buffalo goes down right there. Great job. Uh, 
what is my concealment really doing for me at this point? You know, uh, I don't know. I'm not, am I getting much out of it at this point? Probably not. RPF academic situation, how we're we learning here. RPF is indicating the closest thing is the Alabama. We're out there spotting for our team. Again, again, being five point, if my original 5.9 concealment, is it good enough to spot these guys and not be detected? Yeah, it's fine. I have to be careful about radar. If there's a radar cruiser out there, I got to be careful. Always keep that situational awareness in the mini map to know where are the radar cruisers. That's the first thing I check as well, what kind of destroyers I'm going up against. Know where those are at so that I can move around with autonomy. Again, is 5.9 concealment versus 5.6 concealment going to make a difference in this map or in this situation right here? Uh, again, I, I don't see any gain benefit, and then we've been in this map for about seven minutes so far. So me having that extra 0.3 concealment to 5.9 really is not playing much of a role. Having an extra reload on the torpedoes and the guns actually does. So you'll notice I'm now using the, cons the consistent aspect of my ship right here, which is the guns. And of course, I have torpedoes. Now, my, tor my torpedoes are reloading a little bit longer now because I've chose to have a little better gun reload. I want to have a little bit better gun reload so I can put more fire on the ship and start more fires. So you can see right here in this situation, is concealment really going to matter at this point? For me, not really, because I have the smoke. I have the capability of staying away from this guy if I needed to. So really, I again, I don't, I don't see a benefit right here for me in my in my gameplay. Now, if you again, I've always gone back. You, you play how you want to play. I'm just giving you my thoughts and my opinions on it. Uh, for me, right now, as at the, at the moment of this video right now, I don't see any advantage of having that 5.6 concealment right now. Uh, the Shimakaze players and the Johnstons and everything, the other gearing out there, let's take a look. Will that matter in the long run? So maybe in the later game, that 5.6 concealment may play in a role in the factor. Let's take a look and see if it does. Yama, uh, yeah, yeah. We take down the St. Vincent. Ya Yamato is now reversing into an island, so not really sure what's going on there. That's Battleship gameplay for you. And today, I have to do another video. I think Battleship gameplay is dead. That's why they released the uh, Libertard and uh, that kind of line of shifts because they need him. Somebody, I think PQ did a video just recently, just talked about they're they're making Libertard o OP and overpowered. Is that what's required to get Battleship players to push? I don't know. We'll we'll take a look at that video. We'll, we'll uh, analyze that uh, in another time. But let's see right here. Okay, so we're in a situation where we're out spotting. I am electing not to fire or do anything. Uh, my torpedo reliefs are on cooldown. I just shot a rack. Yamato's down. All that's left is four destroyers, a cruiser, and a battleship. Okay, what are we doing to do in this situation? Well, I could either go cap Delta or Charlie or go cap points for my team. I have a Jaeger, and I'm the only other destroyer player. So one of us has got to take on the other destroyers. They, have a, they outnumber us. They could actually come back and win with four destroyers. I've seen it happen. You know, the store is the key component of the game. Now, Shimakaze out here in the back, not really sure. I'm making an educated decision here. Do I fire and reveal my position, or do I keep my undetectability, my concealment? Now, see, I'm not. Now he, I'm still outside of his range. 6.4, he, he still wouldn't have seen me at this if I had 5.9. So is the extra concealment versus reload playing off in this, this situation here? No. So I could have stayed out 5.9 the whole time of those guys for my old um, build, but right now I'm still undetected no matter what. So would I rather? Would you rather have gun reload at this point? Your thoughts? Because now I got I'm switching from stealth torpedo roll to now a hunter killer roll. Hunter killer roll. Now I gotta go hunt down the DDs. Okay, I would have been detected here at 5.9, 5.7, 5.6. See how fast you can close the distance? 0.3. So is that 0.3 really going to make a difference for you right there? That situation right there allows you to get that extra 0.3 distance of any kind of time, concealment, whatever. He's still going to smoke up, right? The Johnson right here. So you let me know right there that situation. Was that 0.3 really worth it, the drive? You saw how fast it was to close the distance, and I got engine boost up. I don't know. We go undetected because Shimakaze's now being masked by my smoke. He can't see me. Johnson's behind his smoke. He can't see me. So none of us are spotting anybody right now. So we're all in tactical uh, destroyer role. And I love this situation right here. What do you do in these situations to hunt down the destroyers? I love hunting down destroyers. It's really, really fun and really and engaging. All right. He eventually went out of his smoke, so he eventually had to do it. I know I kind of outgunned him at this point. I got full health. He only has 6,000. He has sap shells, of course, but I'm not too worried about that. He only has two front guns now because why? I outmaneuvered him. I had to force him to outturn. I get more guns to bear on him, and it's pretty much clean sweep. You can see right there, tactical gameplay right there. He was cornered against the wall, 
He can only get two of his front guns to bear as opposed to all his five guns. So I had an advantage right there. I outmaneuvered him. And you can see right there, just maneuvering your ship and getting your guns to bear, having RPF know where exactly he's at, that's how you, you can use your Destroyer Hunter gameplay skills to win and mitigate damage. And again, that was um, a little bit lesson right there. You can take it how you want it, but that's how I play in the Destroyer role. I like to attack and bring the fight to the enemy Destroyer player. And uh, having RPF is another key component to help me out in that regard. All right, so now our ooh, he, he's uh, Shimakaze players. Okay, so he torpedoed me right there. He was unsuccessful. So now Shimakaze uh, has a spotting detection range of 5.6, concealment just like me, 5.6. Now at this moment, is concealment going to play a, a role in me engaging this Shimakaze player? So right now, he's the, I think we're going to win this. There's only two destroyers left now. Uh, we got our, uh, our uh, enemy gearing. And uh, we have a Stalingrad heat. Now, I'm in, within his radar range, so i got to be careful here. So if I get spotted, Shimikaze can actually get free shots on me because I have nobody spotting. I don't have any radar on my side. They have a radar on theirs, so we're going to have to make sure we keep our guns facing in the, the direction of the threat. He pops smoke, so I now know where he's at. I'm going to go. Basically, he has nobody spotted. Ooh, we get a torpedo hit right there. Does the gearing get another hit? Can we take, ooh, we take out this gearing? We actually get a good shot. Rika takes out there. Oh, yeah, great job, Rika. Secondary take out the gearing. There's only a Shema. We win this thing. Okay, how do I attack this uh, Shemakazi player head on? The biggest thing right here is keeping my nose in, pointed in to the threat and keeping the guns in the direction of the threat so I can get maximum firepower on. I'm going to detect this guy based on just auto detection. If you get within a certain range of the Shemakazi, it will detect you no matter what. It's called close proximity spotting. All right, 1.9. As soon as we hit 1.9, we both get detected. His guns are not facing in the right direction. We have an advantage there. Notice his back turrets are swinging to us right now. I'm going to aim at his, at his torpedo so he can't get him off. He got him off right out of that. Now I'm going to slam hard left brake so I can avoid the torpedoes. And I do. I end up, the gearing is very, very maneuverable in that regard right there. You can see that situation right there. Little academic situation right there, that lesson. He, I knew he was going to fire torpedoes. Now, the predictive reticle will show me as I'm accelerating that he needs to lead me in order to get the torpedoes on me. I, since I know a player is going to anticipate doing that, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is hard left and slam on the brakes so that I, I, the slower you go, the better you turn. And then, of course, as you're turning away, it brings your, your destroyer inside that torpedo ring or your torpedo barrage. So you're now outside of the threat of torpedoes and you avoid the torpedoes that way. That's the tactic and technique I've always seen and works for me. Again, it doesn't work in every situation. If you have a good Shimakaze player or, or torpedo guy, he's going to anticipate that and fire one rack into you right head on. Okay, He has three torpedo racks. The first two he shot right in front of me. He should have shot the last one right at me to counter that right now. Now I just basically outgun him. I would have had better. I would have liked to have better reload in that situation right there because concealment wouldn't have mattered. He's either proximity spotted or he has radar detect him. Either way, it, it, I'm so close in, it doesn't matter what my detection is. We're going to detect him anyway. So... Right there off the bat, legendary upgrade uh, gets us seven. Again, average damage about 65, 70. I've seen kills. Yep, we defended, we captured one torpedo hit. So, really, again, number one on the team, man. I, I've noticed, again, it, I haven't seen my, my play style differ having that extra 0.3 kilometer. You saw earlier, I closed the distance on the Johnston very, very quickly. You can close 0.3 kilometers very, very quickly in the game. So I don't know if it really, really gives me a kind of an advantage or it makes it any difference. So what are my thoughts? Do I think legendary upgrade gearing is worth it? For me, and this is just me alone, you you could play your play solo again. That's my caveat. I don't think it's really worth it for what it really gives me. Now, if it gave me 0.6 concealment, but it didn't sacrifice my reloads or torpedo or maybe reduce the, those those detriments on my reloads, uh, maybe it might be worth it because I do like having concealment, of course. But I think five, the stock 5.9 concealment is already good enough for what I'm doing. Uh, and I would like to have the better reload uh, personally, on the guns and the torpedoes. That's just me. Uh, but let me know what you think. Uh, what What are your play styles? I would love to hear from you guys. How do you do? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I am not playing the gearing as it was intended uh, for having a 5.6 concealment. So please let me know your thoughts on how to play a 5.6 concealment gearing as opposed to a 5.9. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. So as always, thank you guys for helping me out, supporting the channel and uh, viewing it. You guys have been a great building community. If you see me out there, definitely say hi. And until next time, you guys stay safe and we'll see you soon. Cheers.